Hi, my name is Wendy Olson. I'm working in a team at the University of Manchester, and we're trying to improve how we teach students the sort of methods of quantitative data analysis. And also we're trying to show how to put data into sociology and politics classrooms. But this particular video is about flipping the lecture hall and what the student experience is of a lecture which has a lot of quantitative content and indeed whose aims is to sort of teach one empirical method, in this case the interpretation of a histogram. So I'm going to start with material about how we organize the flipped lecture hall. A lecture hall would have lots of people in it. Um, they wouldn't know each other, I don't need to know all their names, and yet we can have a more informal atmosphere where they're doing active learning instead of passive learning. If we wanted to define a flipped lecture, it would be a suite of well-planned activities in a whole class hall, whereas a tutorial is a small group discussion where you sit in a circle or, or you're looking at papers very closely. So I have there the, the guide for timings of the flipped lecture in which a 20-minute activity plays a key part. The 20-minute activity is preceded by setting out the aims of the lecture and followed by another, another series of interpretation activities and discussion and questions and answers. And of course the lecturer sums up at the end. So it's really important that in my notes and in front of the students' eyes. I have the aims of that day very, very clear. So in the flipped lecture hall with quantitative methods, you have two kinds of aims. You have the learning outcomes, which are the substantive learning outcomes, whatever they are. In our case, it's to explore the meaning of the parts of a histogram and to compare the mean and mode for different histograms. I have an example here of a, of a histogram, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. And um, on the other hand, you also might have methodological or empirical learning outcomes. So I think even for a single lecture, there might be five different learning outcomes. And the more you can make those explicit, the more the students can tick off mentally whether they feel that they're achieving the learning they should achieve for that lecture. Now in the lecture hall, we're doing activities. So prior to the lecture, they should have looked at a, a lecture which they can see on Camtasia, which is more of a traditional presentation. And they should really study a key reading, maybe 20 pages of material. And they come into that lecture hall prepared to receive questions, prepared to discuss, maybe prepared to go into pairs and do activities. The whole thing comes under the broad heading of active learning, rather than passive learning where they just sit there. And I, I've sat in the back of the lecture hall and felt bored. We don't want them bored. So in this case, if we're showing them how to compare, say, the men's histogram of their wage earnings versus the, the female histogram of her wage earnings, they need to know about the skewness of those diagrams, the mode, how to produce the diagrams. The lecturer can demonstrate how to do it, um, but we usually have computer practicals for that. So we try to avoid demonstrating SPSS in a, in a big lecture hall, but instead try and have a handout maybe where they have really interesting material to interpret. Just maybe a double-sided handout with a bar chart and a histogram and some other information. That handout has to be separate from the screen because on the screen you have the activity, we have a PowerPoint presentation that actually contains the activity um, broken down into segments of about five or seven minutes each. So part one has these questions. They look at the documents and they answer the questions. Part two is more of an advanced activity of interpretation, which in this particular case with histograms would be about skewness. Skewness brings the mode out to, to one side and the outliers of the distribution out to the other side, and it would mean then that comparing the means wouldn't be a valid exercise. So that's really the basic um, detailed finding that they need to come away with in terms of critically assessing histograms. Now all this material on flipped learning and flipped lecture halls is based as the part of the Researcher Development Initiative. It's funded by the Economic and Social Research Council of the United Kingdom, and we'd like to welcome you to return to the website where you can find out more, see these PowerPoints, and these other activity um, documents. Thank you.